Well, a special programme we're recording today during the, the TT period, so you might hear helicopters and, and bikes and all sorts of things. We're talking about Krogan. Now, this is a company that we've all been hearing about, the potential to use the gas reserves on around the Isle of Man and to benefit us and obviously to make you guys some money. So, Eric, you are on the board. And Chris, you are director, we've, we've declared before to us. And, yes, and indeed. And I, I, there are a number of local shareholders of which I'm one. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I, I'm to be convinced. I think that a lot of people have got questions. So I'll just, you know, far away and see how we go on this whole thing. I don't know how long you've got here. But, I mean, the background, who wants to do this? Where did this all come from, the idea? Because they've looked at oil and gas, all sorts of things, for years. I mean, back in the 90s. So why now are we suddenly seeing this from you? Well, it, it, <clears throat> I started out with the founders, with Dick and Sargent and uh, June Cotier and, and Ian Sanders. And, and um, this uh, field was looked at and drilled by BP in 1982. And they, um, at that time, gas was only about 2p a therm, 3p a therm. And there was no infrastructure in, in the Irish Sea in order to produce it to. Uh, so basically, they looked at it, drilled it, uh, and left it so to speak, and they ran 2D seismic over it, so they did have drill locations. But but, so. but there wasn't much there, right? There wasn't nothing there to look at. Oh, there was. Well, enough to not do? or, or, or well, They oh, didn't yes. go ahead, right? Yeah, we have the drill reports from that time. We also have uh, cutting samples that we've examined and done uh, laboratory research on, so we understand how the gas will flow through, how much is it in porosity. It's called porosity and permeability studies, but that's getting a bit technical for, mm. for this type of uh, show. But... That uh, led uh, June and Dickon and Ian to move through to uh, starting the company Kroger. Mm -hmm. And um, then uh, they went out into the local market and got uh, pretty well all of the shareholders as Manx shareholders to invest in bringing the project forward. Because the project we do know, and this is some of the things that have been out there is untrue. There is gas there. We do know it's there. We have core samples of the first well. And what we want to do is continue on and do what's called 3D seismic, which means uh, getting a much clearer, more detailed picture of what's there so that we can pick the locations in the best way to put the holes in it and drain it. And this information has been available to you for how long? Oh, three or four years. So everyone's been sitting on this for that time. I mean, have you been well, making... Oh, no. Rumblings for some time on this no, one, because so recently we've all been hearing about you. Well, so. no, COVID kind of took two years out of everybody's lives. But, uh, and during COVID, I mean, we were ready to go prior to, to COVID, but um, basically when COVID hit, everything shut down. And, and there wasn't any way of going to market or look for investors. Uh, and why it takes two or three or four years to get going is a lot of studies, a lot of scientific research and development type studies that have been done in order to make sure we have the right prospect and we know what's there. So it's almost like everybody's life. Mm -hmm. Two years of COVID just disappeared okay. up in smoke. So, I mean, this is not a punt then. This is not just you thinking it might be there. You know it's there. Oh, we know it's there. So this is a done deal if you can get the stuff out. I mean, you drill the pipes and holes, whatever you want to do. Yeah. You are going to make a, a crazy amount of money on this whole thing. But there is gas there to be taken out. There is gas there. I, I don't know if I would go around and say crazy amount of money, but... It is a very profitable prospect. It has a very, very good prospect to, to, to put a lot of tax take into the Isle of Man government. Mm. Uh, it first started out as a gas development, and then as we had a look at uh, what the transition was going on on a global basis, we've added in wind. We're going to have uh, at least 60 megawatts to start with of wind power there. Mm -hmm. We're going to build a hydrogen generation center. Uh, processing plant, of course, which is natural for gas, but also hydrogen and the fact we'll be making DME, which is a, a combination fuel like that that's going to power the new ferry. Mm -hmm. But it is a, a, a centennial type opportunity for the Isle of Man to get its own resources, creating its own economy. This, this development will make uh, the Isle of Man look like a little Norway. If you look at Norway back in 72, for example, when mm -hmm. their parliament was going to sell all of their offshore mineral rights to an American oil company for $2 million. A guy by the last name of Evenson, same as last name as mine. Uh, Probably from the, Norway, the, the uh, guy. Uh, yeah, all my, my family are Norwegian. But um, he convinced them not to. And now you look at Norway as 5 million people with the largest sovereign wealth fund in the world. Okay, that was there and this is now because this is, the, this is where it's all become problematical because a few years ago, people would be jumping up and down. They'd be getting the 
digging holes for you almost because it was the big thing to find this resource in the Manx waters. But times have changed. And you're now dealing with a public that have been taught to believe this is not a good idea in general because of all the consequences. You know, of okay, the global warming thing. The global the warming thing, yeah. I mean, trans it, it is a transition. I know there's some public figures out there that say that we've already transitioned and we shouldn't be developing or the International Energy Agency, uh, we shouldn't be developing oil and gas fields. But fact of the matter is, is gas is part of the transition that the International Energy Agency relies on to get us to 2050 and get us to the 1.5 degrees increase that they're aiming for. And if you look at their charts, I mean, you get up to 2050 and the world, the global supply of uh, energy is about 30%, 40% gas, mm. natural gas, just like we're going to do. Uh, we have not transitioned. We've got a gas-powered uh, uh, generator here, but we also have two diesel generators. In order to transition, you need a base load. So if we have wind towers and if we have the solar power, etc., when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine, we need a base load to back us up. And that's what the natural gas does. And natural gas can do that in a very, very carbon efficient way. Um, and that's how we view it as a transition. So how, how does it do it in a carbon efficient way? Well, there's the, there's the way we're doing it today. And then you can get anaerobics question onto the flumes of the gas generator our gas plant, yeah. that actually also takes away most of the carbon. So there's a lot of technology that's going into this that we're going to put into it and invest in as we develop this project because but, we will be a net zero project. As but as it, as it stands, we're not going to be selling gas boilers or anything to do with gas in X amount. Is it 30 years, Chris? They've, they've, they've down these yeah, details, haven't they? Yeah, but you see, that 20 years, I know. it's not about the boilers in the home. It's about generating the electricity to run the power. Yeah, but I'm saying if, if gas is so bad that we can't have our own boilers what makes you you know think that you are going to have this sort of exception to the rule surely they're going to get rid of gas period well hang they? on a second i mean we've got a situation here where other jurisdictions close to us are, are, are further back in terms of their transition um and you've got the, the likes of ireland who are currently on coal-fired power stations and they they in in cooperation with the eu are migrating now or in the near future to gas-fired power stations. This whole idea that gas is not, is not touchable is completely and utterly wrong. It is the transitional fuel. It depends who you talk to, doesn't it? There's well, people, no, people out here what, screaming at the TVs what, what, going, no, don't what, touch one it. Of the, well, hang on a second. One of the reasons um, Kroger is anxious to start articulating its excellent case in public is that those who have picked up bits and pieces um, of the the transition agenda and misunderstood it are throwing information out willy-nilly without... I don't even think they've spoken to Kroger. And the more you look at the Kroger uh, story, the more uh, imperative the individual will see it is to make sure that we, we pursue it. One of the things you hear them say is, well, it... We won't get gas for, you know, till 2030. And I think you know, perhaps... Yeah, Eric well, the timeline obviously is interesting because it isn't a thing that's going to happen tomorrow, is it? jumping across different t subjects here. But the thing, the timeline isn't anything of what they're projecting. Yeah. The timeline is that we will be finished seismic and seismic studies by next year. And by the year thereafter, we'll have the first well in the ground. Okay. Uh, we will be producing gas commercially out through the pipeline to Ireland, for example, to replace the coal generators uh, well before 2030. Now this gas, you're, you're assuming it's clean gas. I don't know much about this, but I do know there's potential that it's not that as clean as you want it to be, and that causes more issues, but you don't know that yet, do you? Yeah, it's, we do. Uh, this, we do. This, this well was drilled in 1982. They didn't have any presence of H2S, which was one of the unclean things. Right. Uh, there is, there is a, we have a very good understanding of what's down there. The understanding that we need in the project, i.e. the seismic and the appraisal well, is to find out the best locations to drain it and, and to be able to find out how fast it would flow so that we understand what kind of infrastructure is needed to flow it. And these pipelines and holes, are they going to be in designated areas that the shipping is going to be okay about it and where everyone's happy? because the shipping won't even see it. Right, but they'd have I to work around it. Well, I saw BBC... Northwest program where they showed a very, very large, large 1980s Morecambe Bay huge platform. 
And I was going to put up a, a picture and go, well, that's the 1980s. And then the Manx gas field and just show the sea, because that's all you're going to see is the sea. Mm. It's all underwater. Yeah, but the ships, yes. the ships have to navigate around it, won't they? I mean, no. No, they, they can go over the top. Okay. No, they can even trawl over it with trawlers. Right. And, and that's standard stuff around the world. And, and this gas would come in on a pipeline into the Isle of Man, or are you sending it off to Morecambe or whatever else? No, it's coming what? into the Isle of Man. It's a very a very uh, important point, actually, is, is when we produce the gas and it comes onto the Isle of Man and gets dried and a few bits of particulate that may come with it get knocked out, then it goes into the European pipeline system that we're connected to, where we get our gas from today. Mm -hmm. Doing it that way, the Isle of Man, is, it, it can put VAT on it. It's called sticky VAT. If we produce to the Morecambe Bay, then it'll be the UK jurisdiction that puts VAT on it as it goes out to the European market. So it's very important it comes here so that we actually, it's a financial thing. Mm -hmm. But it also is very important because if we bring it here and we develop the hydrogen stations and these other things, we're developing really strong, good technical jobs for our young people. So when they go over to the UK, they can get a good technical degree and they can come back and get a job that pays very well so that two of them put together can actually buy a house here. And this yeah. gas... If it's there, and you know, you can get it, and all that sort of thing. I don't like the word if, because I know it is. Okay. <laughs> let's do timelines, then. Let's, right. let's do timelines. It's going to take X, long, X amount of time to get it all sorted, then to get it onto the land and pipes built and that sort of thing. So give us your expectations here. Well, the expectation in our business plan is five years from start to finish in terms of uh, getting it ready and flowing commercially mm -hmm. into a retail uh, market. Now, of course, it, this has nothing to do with the price of gas going through the, the, the roof at the minute. I mean, now what you was there a couple of years ago was worth, hmm, you know, <laughs> whatever the firm it was then. Now it's absolutely crazy money. I mean, that must be a massive incentive, right, that you, you see gold in them hills, as you that expression. Well, it is an incentive. I mean, if you look at the, the beginning of 2022, the price of gas, and then the price of gas now, it's more than doubled. So... Here in the Isle of Man and the rest of the world, basically, we're going to see some very large increases in our electricity bills over in what we see now, right? Uh, if, if the entire world stopped drilling up gas and oil, oil uh, fields and wells, within uh, two to three years, we would have a huge energy crisis and we'd probably put the globe, it'd be in a global depression because of the economic effect of it. So... The price of gas, you know, from July 2020, in the middle of, um, of uh, the pandemic, where the consumption was down quite a bit, the other thing that happened is all of the uh, drilling and, uh, of new oil and gas fields in order to meet the world's consumption also stopped. And we, have an, we had an energy crisis. If you look at the price of gas from July 2020 through to today, it's just a straight exponential upward curve. Mm -hmm. So we are in an energy crisis because the real thing that we should be looking at is that is that we're not reducing our consumption, we're not insulating our homes, we're not uh, lowering the um, the uh, temperatures, we're not you know changing our lives to consume less. Well, eventually we won't be allowed to get gas boilers, as I said. So there will have to be a weaning off of gas as, as it stands, domestic gas anyway. And well, as I said, I mean, 2050, the the International Energy Agency has gas as 20 to 40 percent, and in the Isle of Man, mm -hmm. um, we'll have its gas field, and by that time, we will have made the transition through in such that we, we will be on wind, mm -hmm. we will be on solar, and we will have a different way of backing up. That technology for a, a load backup for electricity isn't available today. There's things out there that look promising, sure. but it's going to take 10, 15 years to, be, to make those commercial and develop well, them. Well, you're saying five years up and running, and... Next bit of the timeline is how long is 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 it going to last? I mean, it's something you, you don't know yet. That bit, do you? I mean, is we it have an idea? Go on. Okay, we have Throw an idea. So we're probably going to have around ten to fifteen years of production after that. It's not a lot, is it, in, in the way of gas fields? So it's, it's not a big one then. No, uh, most you... gas fields, other than some of the ones in the, you know, I've worked around the world in the oil industry, right? Yeah. And, um, uh, a lot of fields only last uh, five to ten years. And then we, we better d deal with this, this as well. It's going to last longer than five right. to ten. But do you then have to start fracking or, 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 or all these? Oh, and, and, and now you give me that look. Oh, I don't know. I'm asking, is that a really bad word, isn't it, for so many people to hear well, that? Uh, fracking is, is a word that they use in social media that describes shale fracking, which is a, a, a something that they frack somewhere from, you know, down to around 2,000 feet. And it's a bad word because if you're, if you're putting that kind of uh, pressure at that level, the earth lifts like this. The original hydraulic fracking that came out was down much deeper and it's an ecliptical, right? But this reservoir is a clean 
naturally fractured sandstone. There isn't any need to frack it, as they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And if we did, we'd probably kill it. Right. I mean, excuse my ignorance, but what fills the gap when you take the gas out? You use pump water in, or to just sit there uh, empty? Or how yeah, this work? is the thing. When people think about oil fields and gas fields, they talk about pools, right? They're not pools. They exist in rocks, right? And so when the gas leaves, you still just have the rock. Which is the other side of it, is after the, the gas in these wells is produced, or some of them are produced faster than others, etc., then these, these carbon scrubbers that are being developed a lot these days, where they're taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, needs to be stored somewhere. And when the gas is out, then the carbon dioxide from the scrubbers can go in. Mm. So it's a dual purpose. So after 10 or 15 years, we possibly we could have a market of, a, of carbon dioxide injection. The price is going only one way, you're saying with gas, right? It is at the moment. Do you, do you, do you, the crystal ball, uh, is it still, even without the Ukrainian situation, is it going to be going crazy for the next well, 15 years? Well, I was actually just studying through that today, uh, and we have many of the uh, financial agencies around the world say that gas might come down a bit. I think it'll still go crazy now for 20, 2023 and twenty. What Was it too cheap? Was gas actually, because we're getting used to the spending, it never had to a pay rise, it was always, you know, it's always going down, it seemed, or steady, anyway. I mean, was it just a thing that we, we just... Well, you have to remember, is over these last few years, people have been shutting down their, their nuclear power stations, they've been shutting down their coal generations, that kind of thing, reducing their oil, uh, use of oil for uh, power generation. As you reduce those hydrocarbons, which are very heavy and dirty hydrocarbons, and putting gas in to replace them, which is a much lighter hydrocarbon, you need supply. And that's why gas was like that, because nobody was worried about the coal and the oil back then, so to speak, back then. How so you, so you, you say you, the forecasters, forecasters expect to see a peak in 22, 23. Where do you think the price will go after that? Oh, no, I, I think peaking will happen 23, 24. And after that, what do you think? It's unsure. In most of the calculations I've seen, um, it's unsure, but it, it may come down. From Kroger's perspective, we believe gas might come back and stabilise around £1.50 to £2 per therm. Uh, and where are we at the minute? Because I don't even know. Oh, where. probably about double out of the moment. Double. Yeah. I'm looking at my gas However, bill. Yeah. that's why we we gave the offer to the government to yeah. cap. Let me, let me come to that in a second. Right, cause right. It's, it's, it's a sweetener. I want to come to you because you've been very quiet overall. Which I know you're, you know, you're invested in this whole thing, but why? Why are you involved? Why... Chris Robert Shaw, with all his wealth and all his knowledge of making money and retiring, you know, what attracted you to this? Because I'm intrigued. Because, you know, did you have any moral issues on it at all? None whatsoever. Absolutely not. Right. Kroger itself, um, I mean, I was convinced very early doors that Kroger was determined to be a, a, a green energy company uh, finding its resource from the recovering of the gas. So, you know, we, we get a, a complete win-win. We get gas for local uh, you know, local consumers at a sensible, really sensible price because of... Okay, well, let's, we can bring that in then because you, you're the sweetener thing. Well, well, hang on, there's a oh. lot more to it than that. Okay. There's, there's the fact that the Isle of Man now for, for some considerable period of time has enjoyed, a, 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 in financial terms, in economic terms, a a fairly benign environment, but anybody who understands what's happening now knows that the world in the next decade is going to become much more difficult and great pressure is going to come to bear on our financial situation and household incomes and we're already seeing that. And this is a golden opportunity for the Isle of Man to enjoy, the householders of the Isle of Man to enjoy really competitively priced gas, but also know that the Isle of Man is also developing its own green energy company, which is absolutely phenomenal. It'll put, as Eric has said, it'll put the Isle of Man in a quite exceptional situation where it will have to, for example, develop a wealth fund. Um, and the jobs, and Eric is far better than I at these sort of things, but the jobs that... and, and and sort of businesses that can spin out of Kroger developing green energy resource is just absolutely phenomenal. And it's, frankly, it's the biggest thing that's happened to the Isle of Man in generations. Yeah, okay. And it, it really needs to understand that. Let me talk about this thing, though, this price thing, because it's very clever. 
by looks it, because you're making the government an offer they can't refuse. You're going to give them cheap gas, and that cheap gas will come to the us, the punters. Yeah. So we can't refuse you almost because it is something that we mm. just. It's like a dream almost, isn't it, in this day and age, to have the potential for cheap gas. How does that work? Well, basically, I mean, uh, we uh, have made a, an agreement with the government that uh, regardless of what the global price of gas is, uh, we will cap the, the provision to the Isle of Man at 80p. So if it ever goes down below 80p, which we don't think it's going to get anywhere near that, then you'll pay the lower price. The government will pay the lower price, but it'll never pay more than 80p. So it's going to pay half or even a quarter. I, I, I'm not entirely sure about gas price today because it moves so quickly of what we see today. So it'll bring us back back to a, a jurisdiction that has a reasonable priced energy for the, for the population. But it also makes this jurisdiction very attractive because now you can use that kind of energy where you have industries or manufacturing that requires that kind of energy at a quarter or half of the price it would be at anywhere else. It makes but, the island attractive to them. I mean, I'm not, I don't know if I want to use a word, but it, there's a certain thing that you may you put them over a barrel almost, aren't you? Because it's, it's too oh, good no. to be... I mean, who... No, you're going to lose money no, on this. Look, look, the we, will, we won't... Yeah, yeah. Oh. The reverse is the case. Yeah. That an, an, the, the world is currently running into a real crisis. That's the barrel that the world is being put over. Kroger is saying and government recognises this, actually, for the Isle of Man, there's a way out. So, Krog is not putting anybody over you're, a barrel. You'll be selling it potentially for less than it costs. No. Well, well no? hang on a second. Oh, okay. let, let, let's just, let's okay. just... Why is it that Kroger is in a position to be able to offer such a competitive price to Manx consumers? And, and that is, and this is important to understand, that much of the gas will go to consumers off-island, for example, like the Irish, who are desperately trying to get themselves off coal-fired power stations. The Isle of Man will consume, in the region of, 5% of the fully available uh, gas that's going to come out of the field. Mm -hmm. So because, because market prices will exercise themselves on the Isle of Man's gas exports, it, it puts Kroger in a position where it can negotiate with government to uh, enjoy a really attractive price, which is, which is you know, terrific. Oh, and let's just, while we're talking about money, let's just kill one or two of these fairy stories that are flying around. One of them is, oh, well, in the end, government's going to have to cough up. No. All the money going into Kroger, all the money, all the investment, and it's very, very considerable. It costs a lot of money to deliver a gas field. All of that will come from the private sector. It is the fact that government have control of it through the licence that enables the government to get a massive return on a, effectively a zero investment. And that means the taxpayer is getting a phenomenal return, not just in, in the cost of energy, but all the opportunities that restabilising Manx finances in the years to come will offer business, entrepreneurs, Everybody, it's just, it's a wonderful opportunity, and we snub it at our cost. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to add on that one? Does he well, yeah, it's, you were saying that holding them over the barrel, it's not that. I mean, it, it's well, it's, it's rare to hear a business that will actually try and help the society and the government it's in, right? You know, that's the, actually the what adage, though, if to it's do. too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. Exactly. <laughs> okay. I, get, I get what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, and I, I can see that, but... As, as, as Chris was saying, I mean, uh, it, the it, amount of, of our production that uh, the island will use is five or less, actually, percent. Uh, and, and if that's going at 80p or 70p or whatever it is, and, and then 95% of our production is being sold at 150 to 2, it's very easy from an economic standpoint to see how we're, we won't be losing money. Mm -hmm. And, and in, in addition to that, we've capped the 80p with no... Um, inflationary increase for the first 10 years. And it's not holding anybody over the barrel. It's being collaborative. We're trying to develop this jurisdiction. I mean, we're part of this jurisdiction. Right. We want to make it better for our families in the future. Let's just bring in the word Manx gas here. Will you be looking to purchase them? Will you be bypassing them? Will you be the new Manx gas, but in we'll a new well, name? That's a, that's a long, long-term strategic question. Well, we don't know how that will develop because as we go on, uh, we're developing renewables, and there becomes a renewable market. Um, I mean, pie in the sky, we could, for example, be paying for a new interconnector 
to sell our, our renewable energy because we'll have more than the island is going to need, that type of thing. But you will just be selling this gas to the government. The pipe ends up somewhere, up at the power station, wherever. The Manx and that's consumption it. will send to the Manx, government. The Manx bit, yeah. But everything we export, we sell to different uh, jurisdictions. And that companies. pipe is, who owns that pipe? That's the European pipeline. So basically, when you put gas in it as a balancing point from here, uh, whoever you're selling the gas to gets your price plus the cost of transport going through the, the pipeline. But, right. but it's because for everybody, you can sell all through Europe. We can sell gas down to Italy. But, be, be, but because it's an Isle of Man company um, and it has full visibility on the part of government and government understands that it's going to enjoy for every pound, in broad terms now, for every pound that's taken out of the ground, government is going to get approximately half or just more than half for every pound that comes out. And then on top of that, they'll also get the VAT where they sell it. Well, that's what I was going to come to. I mean, that's yeah. almost like a, a double whammy then, isn't it? Yeah, it's a very, very, very profitable situation for our government. Yeah. Can, can it I, is their resource. Yeah, yeah. We're just producing it for them. Can, can, I, can I just say that the Isle of Man uh, owes a debt of gratitude to David North? Because some time back, David was the person, MHK, who ensured that the Isle of Man, within its new uh, territorial uh, borders, sea borders, um, would enjoy mineral rights. And it's that move which has enabled the government to, fight, to put the community in the Isle of Man in such a wonderful position. So does this, this well of gas, is it potentially doable to get from the UK side as well? Will you both be fighting over this pool? Or, or has it already happened or what? Well, there is a couple of leases and, and seismic going on now on the UK uh, south of us you know, over in their jurisdiction and south of us. Um, but no, you, you, the type of distances we're talking about, they would have to drill right up against the territorial border and drill horizontally into our reservoir. It, I, I just don't see that as ever happening. That, that kind of piracy ended in Texas in the 50s. <laughs> you know, when there's money involved, I wouldn't well, be so sure. I know. I mean, you know, that's they, where they, directional drilling came I mean, from. <laughs> really, they didn't want to give us those territorial waters at all, did they? I mean, no, that's well, what you're that, talking about. That's, that, the that's, fight why, that's why it's so important to recognise the work David, David North did. Mm -hmm. So, that's supposing you can convince Tim, but you've had extensions. Yes, are you happy now with what extension you've got? Well, that's why we're out here today, is that right. we really haven't said anything since the extension was announced. And uh, we got a 27-month uh, extension for the seismic period, and our license goes until 2048. Mm -hmm. So it, it was set an extension within the license that we got, as the license actually covers up to 2048. Is that enough for you, though? Are you happy oh, yes. with what you've got now? Happy. Because there's people in Timble who definitely don't want this. I mean... They've made I their think voices one or two. Well, there's one or two, but they've made their voices very. Yeah, well, well what way. is the argument, though? I mean, it, what is the argument that we're already transitioned, or that we won't be able to sell the gas? I mean, what is the argument behind it? And if, and if we already have transitioned, where's the wind towers? Where's our infrastructure in order to accept that kind of power coming from uh, a wind tower? The, the, the statements being made um, within by one or two members in in Timbald are fairly superficial and what's what's disappointing and perhaps it's 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 the fault of Kroger and its investors and and the broader community that understand its importance that, that hasn't articulated the case more clearly before now but what is worrying is that these people who are you know bringing out these half truths um, inaccurate statements they haven't actually sat down with Kroger and gone through you know, line by line, how important the, the process of recovering our gas is to the whole issue of transition. For example, superficially, you might say, oh, well, we're going to have two, in, two interconnectors, for example, from the UK, so we've got all the electricity that we'll need. But we won't control the prices. Uh, we won't the, control the supply. Or the supply of the, of the prices. But what people need to really understand is infrastructure issues and home conversion costs. Now, Kroger is absolutely behind this process. And so where does the money come from to insulate our, all our houses, our 40-odd thousand houses? It's a huge amount of money. It's north of, of a billion. And then you've got the issue about the cost of the infrastructure. That's the cabling, if you like, from a, a central point to each home. Once you have every car, house with a 
an electric uh, vehicle or more, when you have electric heating in the home, you're going to have a situation where there's going to have to be a renewal of the, all the infrastructure, and accordingly, there's a massive cost there. Now, we've got a government whose reserves are getting tighter and tighter, where demands on the finances are getting ever more pressured. Uh, Paul, where is the money going to come from to enable those very, very important transitions, and they're the important transitions, where is it going to come from? The argument that we would strongly make is the funding coming into Kroger and the funding coming into government provides all of that and mm. still okay, okay. delivers a wealth fund capacity after that. What are your terms? Have you got exclusivity? I mean, and have you had to buy that exclusivity? Are you, are you licensed and paying for a license? Or yes. is it a, one of those things that you just... No, it's an, an exclusive license for a particular area in order to produce, it's in the license says, get hydrocarbons out of the ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, the license is, it's the Isle of Man government's mineral rights. They own this gas. And they've given us a license to get it out of the ground. And it is exclusive to us. Uh, Did you pay for it? Yes. A lot of money, or was it a token amount? Not a lot of money. The so this wasn't real money like you hear these... People who go drilling elsewhere. No, no the, money, the money to government that's, comes out of recovering the gas. Yeah, that, you know, a lot of money in, in different jurisdictions depends on what jurisdiction you're in. Uh, a, a government is more interested in getting its resources out of the ground and getting revenue from it for their taxpayers than they are in getting a license fee this year. I know we paid the license fee. We, we competitively won the license. And um, the government has uh, many, many years of super revenues to come in from this that they can enjoy from it so and this is where you like building the wind farms and solar panels all that will come from that sort of fund or are you are you actually getting involved in that yourself do i hear yes you? we so will be building wind towers ourselves the wind towers will be will be um powering our uh processing plant they'll be powering our hydrogen plant and, and the other things we're doing we have committed to the government to be net zero in our operations and the other side of the coin I think we've heard in the public is, uh, oh yeah, but the government's going to have to pay a lot of money. The government's not paying anything. We're paying it. And if there's any mistakes that occur, we pay for it. And we're insured to make sure that we have the capacity to pay for any mistakes that occur. We don't anticipate any, any mistakes. We're all very professional uh, engineers. And, but we have covered that aspect. Yeah. And that's actually normal throughout the world. You know? Are you surprised the Isle of Man has got no wind very little solar they don't have i mean we have wind i meant wind <laughs> <laughs> i meant you know the actual turbines do you live here <laughs> are you let's try again are you surprised we have no wind turbines it's always sunny like this. the island man has an excellent wind envelope right and you know one of the reasons over the over the past is that you had electricity supply being supplied by oil gas and coal and nuclear and and uh wind wasn't competitive uh, in the UK side, uh, the government was offering subsidies in order to put wind in. The Isle of Man government weren't able to offer subsidies. But now, with the fact that we have much larger wind towers, you know, we're at 10, 12 megawatt towers um, versus the two, three in the past, mm -hmm. it's much more profitable. And of course, the energy prices being up where they are, all of a sudden wind becomes uh, a profitable enterprise. So all this building, that, I mean... The, the this is going to be offshore mm -hmm. turbines. Well, you'll see those then. You said you'll be going over your pipes, all right, but you'll be seeing these yeah. things well, from the land, will you? The gas field here in the wind there. But you'll <laughs> see them, right? You'll, the, yeah, the wind turbines. will be visual, visual impact Definitely, on that yes, one. you will. Yeah. Harry, okay. how soon after... Same as you see the Morecambe Bay ones from here. How soon after the, the gas recovery actually starts in practice, how soon after that would you hope to see Kroger start moving forward on wind farm development? No, it, it happens simultaneously. So, at the same time, as we're out there doing doing the the drilling of the gas field, we have what's called safety and supply boats that are part of the health and safety system to be around us. And the where we are out there, the water is like 15, 20 meters deep. So as we're drilling, and these guys aren't doing anything, but there are safe, they'll be out there putting down the cement platforms that the wind towers will go on. So it's a simultaneous operation. And let's talk about disruption in general then. But, you know, with all this infrastructure going in, will people be looking out their windows and seeing and hearing a, a lot of disruption for years to come? No. You know, uh, the, the maximum, um, I should say, fervent activity is three years. And 
at, a, at around 11 to 12 miles offshore, you are not going to hear anything. But when you have one of those plumes of gas, like oh. every... Uh, no, I, I <laughs> <know> <laughs> <we can't laughs> You see, I'm just old-fashioned in my views, but that's what we, we, we imagine. We've got to right? move away from the 80s, right? Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck in the no. 80s. No, no, I mean, no, I wouldn't know, but a lot of people wouldn't know that, right? So you no. won't be seeing plumes, okay. No, and, and if you did see mm -hmm. a plume, it was because a high, uh, an emergency situation occurred, right? Or for one day or two days, we may have to test a well in a certain way mm -hmm. and don't have the capacity to, to store the, the hydrocarbon coming out, and then there might be a flare. I mean, we're not... We uh, are going to do this in a very modern way, you know, and, and we really understand what we're doing. We're the guys who over these last 40, 40 years have been, uh, put, you know, doing the bolts up on the flanges and we know how to do it much better now with much better technology than the statistics that you're seeing in the public. These statistics that we've seen from, are like from the 1980s and the 1990s and completely different uh, technology. Yeah, and I, following that through for a second, I mean, because oil has been such a huge industry with mega awesome. money involved for over such a long period, a lot of brains have migrated to the recovery of fossil fuels. What people don't fully appreciate is that as renewables come more and more into focus, a lot of these engineers, as is the case with Kroger, are migrating across. And it's, this is one of the opportunities that the Isle of Man will have to develop new industries, new green energy industries, because of the resource that comes out of the Kroger field. And one other thing I, I do want to touch on before I forget, and that is that there's a fairy story going around that the Isle of Man will have this big mega plant to, to deal with the gas as it comes on shore and that this will be an eyesore. Um, can I ask Eric to describe the size of the plant that you'd expect And also location or and the Location, of course, is a, is a corporate secret. We have to keep the location secret for the moment. Okay, just wait. You, you bought we some land already, or are you looking at it by? You I haven't really bought anything? I can't comment on that at all, Paul. Uh, right. But we do have a plan. Because no place. one's anything in their backyard, as to use that expression. You know that. It's no one wants anything. I think the public would be very happy where it's going. But um, it is a very small facility. All we're doing is just drying it. And if, there, if there's any particulate matter, taking it out. And if, if there's any condensate that develops from the change. So that would be noisy and you'll be having trucks pulling this, whatever this waste stuff is and taking no, it away? No, 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 no. No? Not at all. Uh, it won't be noisy. It'll be uh, almost sort of, sort of like a military installation where you get down lighting and, and uh, berms, etc. You won't really even, you'd have to look for it to find Roughly it. Roughly what size? The, uh, multiples of tennis courts, for example. Well, the thing is, is that this is one of the reasons why we want to get our appraisal well in there so we know the, uh, the extent of the flow, because the more flow you have, the different size of facility you need. But if you uh, built a facility based on our financial calculations on flow, uh, it would be quite small, actually. Um, yes, go on. Well, give us a rough. 300, 400, 500 square meters at the most, yeah. This is the final dash for ca gas, isn't it, really? I mean, this is it. This is the last chance you're going to have ever to do this because the world is changing. And people look back at this yeah. in 100 years' time or whatever, watch this yeah. programme go, wow, they actually were still busy trying to get that gas Well, out. if they watch this programme in 2050, they will still be relying on gas for a base load, according to the International Energy Agency and the World Bank and that. So it's going to have to be a, another 80, 90 years before they look back and say, okay. ah, but I have to take a caveat on that. If our technologies develop quicker on baseload battery type systems like the Newton system or, or uh, that type of thing, then that may change. But it won't change to be commercially viable in the next decade or so. And that's the, that's the extent of the gas side of Kroga. The renewable side goes into the future, of course. So it, it's very well timed and placed as a project, considering uh, the world's utilization of uh, hydrocarbon power. Right. Well, but before we wrap this up, I mean, you, you, you're doing a charm offensive now, basically. Oh, well, you, you, you're going... Uh, it's char he is charming. <laughs> but it, it, this is serious. You need to get people on side, right? We do. You know, you have to remember that uh, prior to the change of the government uh, recently, we had, we had been gagged by the saying that we were not allowed to get out in the public and talk about this. It's just when the government changed, we were now allowed to go out and actually speak about it. Mm -hmm. And so... We, it's been a one-sided dialogue for the last two or three years, and now we're willing to get out there and say, okay, well, actually, let's look at the facts. Let's look at the science, as everyone says. 
And this is the science of what Krog is going to do. Uh, it's a lot different than the dialogue that we're seeing in, in public media. And, and what I would say is, uh, as an ex-member of Timbald is that, is that any member who has any doubts or wants to understand where to, to examine their reservations against the science, mm. and I'm setting Eric up here, and I'm sure he'll be more than willing very happy. to sit down and to explain very carefully the facts. And this is all about facts that... Uh, Krog is now embarked I'm on. more than willing to sit down and talk to any committee, any yeah. single MHK or any yeah. any committee at all, and go through it so that we can actually have a, a, a proper collaborative talk on what this is. I mean, every project has good and bad points, but this one has a lot of good points. All right. Well, before I wrap it, is there anything I've missed, anything you want to get over, any points? I'm giving you the floor in case I've missed anything. Before you have. Uh, um, I'm sure we have, but th this is just the start of it. Perhaps you, if if there is uh, the opportunity, invite us back for a further Of course, chance. of course. I mean, you know, uh, it, I say it's going to be fascinating to see which way this plays out. Mm -hmm. It's it's it, reading the, mu the mood music is really difficult because there's different voices out there. Well, well as, as Eric said, Kroger will be mm -hmm. working a lot harder from now on to make sure that, 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 that the public are much better informed in the future about yeah. this important transition programme that the island's entering into. What it means it, for the families yeah. in the future. So let, just... Give me a date. I know things are movable, and we may have another pandemic or something else. But oh, when please. do you? Th oh no, that's a horrible thing to say. When, when do you think realistically that gas? I was going to call it Manx gas, but gas from the, from Manx waters will be in my house, heating my house, and and therefore, when, when when will the money be coming into the tre well, treasury? As okay, well? I like yeah. the spin you're doing it. But you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually a, a fairly complex question. Because once we have gas flow to service and know the volumes that we'll be able to expect, we can do forward contracts. There's a whole um, financial capability around this. So it's difficult for me to actually point out a date for you. Maybe the best way uh, of looking at it is when does the Isle of Man start to benefit from Kroger's project, right? Mm -hmm. And the first benefits start as soon as we start. With all the jobs, uh, you know, we're going to invest somewhere between 700 and 800 million pounds here. Investing that kind of money in a jurisdiction this small, you will see the benefits from this project from day one. That's massive. I mean, I just it's huge. It's the largest investment that will ever come to the island. So how many people get involved? How many? On the Isle oh, of Man? Gross. Oh, they're on the Isle of Man, I, I don't, I'm not sure if I'm allowed, but we have so, just under 100 shareholders that are all local Manx people. Right. And employing people here, how many? When living here? When you get going, you'll get hundreds of people. Employed. Hundreds of people. And then later on, as, as Kroger... It has a periphery effect. Uh, you know, pursues the transition to, to uh, you know, a green energy, then there's a whole opportunity for creating new industries on the island. It, 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 I don't want to over-egg this, but listening to what's been said today, it's very clear this singularly is the biggest thing that's happened for the Isle of Man in a long time. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a huge opportunity which we should embrace. So the public debate starts, and you have a website, you have phone numbers. What, we have, have a website, etc., that we're now recreating, right. uh, and we will bring it up uh, within the next okay. month. We'll, we'll come up with a different website than we have. Previously. And someone's at the end of the phone, slash, you know, to answer questions. at the end of the phone, anybody wants to ask a question. Okay. Always. Well, Eric, thanks for coming, Chris. Thank you. And there's, very some, much. there's some information going oh. to be coming into the public arena for, for households to, to, to read for themselves. And perhaps from that point, they might want to contact Crocker and say, well, yes, but what about this or what about that? Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks, thanks for coming in. Because we want a transparent process. Well, we're looking forward to coming back because this is the way where you, we can just talk. We've done uh, over, oh my goodness, over 40 odd minutes here. So, wow. uh, it's long for, enough. 44 <laughs> minutes, I think. So, thanks to my guests and uh, a, a special program. I'm sure you've got comments you can put on below, but uh, better contact them and we'll pick it up again at some yeah. point soon. So, well, thank, thank you thank very you. much for the opportunity to have something to say. Thanks. Thanks.